Well, thank you guys for uh, coming out for this roundtable today uh, on E4 Interpersonal Relationships. Uh, this roundtable is uh, uh, attached to or accompanied with session six of the study, which deals with resolving conflict. Mm. Um, so who we have here today for the cameras, we have Pastor Ryan Rodeman uh, of the Bath Campus of Grace Church. It's awesome. And Pastor Jeff Martell, uh, a pastor at uh, the Norton Campus, but will be soon at the Barberton Campus. So thank you guys for coming out. So we've got this session uh, that we've talked a little bit about <clears throat> that's been on, again, resolving conflict. Um, often when we talk about conflict being resolved, this word reconciliation usually appears. Um, and I, I think we can especially see that in the scriptures we, we look at that word and it pops up a lot. Uh, specifically, we want to kind of uh, discuss or banner back and forth here is uh, where reconciliation, that word shows up in 2 Corinthians 5. Um, so in that passage, Paul talks about if anybody's in Christ, you know, he's a new creation, the old is gone, a new has come. And then he seems to then uh, very fluidly move from this concept of being a new creation in Christ, like living differently and mm -hmm. having that impact life. Uh, he seems to tie that together with this idea of reconciliation first to God and then to others. So um, as we talk about that, I, the, I think the question that I have is, given the fact that reconciliation appears quite a bit in that chapter, he's, Paul seems to want to really hammer in on this on this point what do you what do you guys think Paul means when he uses language like that uh, maybe that's the first question the corollary is uh, what does he mean but also how does his understanding of reconciliation tie practically into how we approach relationships with other people yeah you know for me this is this is like a really life-changing thing mm. in my in my walk with the Lord and in, in my relationships with other people because um, like reconciliation, it means it means bringing together again, or uh, one one of the definitions I saw is to make friendly again. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. So God has has made friendly with us, right, through sending Jesus. So when I when I uh, decided to follow Jesus and have mm -hmm. a relationship with Him, I am now a friend of God. I've been reconciled to God, and how that has affected my relationships with people is mm -hmm. like huge, yeah. you know, because you think about all that you've been forgiven of, sure. you know, like I know what a knucklehead I've been, <laughs> like, right. Right. you know, like I know how rotten I've been and God knows all of those things right. too. And if he's willing to forgive me for those things, like who am I not to, you know, forgive and reconcile with other people who've hurt me in much less ways. So I think of like my, uh, I have a, I won't tell you who it is, but I had a, a close relationship, have a close relationship with somebody that hurt me really deeply mm. at one point. And uh, this person is a follower of Jesus, and, mm. and I was too at the time. And it was like very, very painful. Like the ones that, that you know we love most can hurt us the uh, deepest. Yeah. And I was very tempted to just shut this person out, you know. But as I, I think as the Lord worked on my heart through that and reminding me all that I've been forgiven mm -hmm. of, it was That's like good. I had no choice. Yeah. You know, like I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself or live with the Lord if I didn't seek reconciliation yeah. with that person. So for me, like this <clears throat> idea of God reconciling us to himself mm -hmm. has it had a huge effect in my relationship with others. That's awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. it starts to show up everywhere, yeah. right? I mean, if, if God would intervene in the brokenness of our relationship with him, Right, it makes us have to kind of get in the middle of all those broken relationships. Mm -hmm. Between it was between other believers, it was between ourselves and other yeah. believers, right? And so we kind of dive into that brokenness of relationships wherever it finds itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's the idea. How am I going to be a Christ follower and be okay having broken relationships? Because I think that's mm -hmm. that's one thing that shows up is is our relationships can feel disposable. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of the cultural yeah. norm, yeah, right? Good. If you hurt me. I just like get rid of this relationship and it's over. Mm -hmm. But if if God would come and pursue me as his enemy, like you're saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right, then I can't just let this broken relationship be. I gotta mm -hmm. go chase it down mm -hmm. a little bit, you know? And one of the things that really impacted me was this verse um, where Paul says, so from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view or according to the flesh. So I, don't, I can't just look at a human being yeah. and just see flesh and blood and, mm -hmm. and see people as, as just, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just, a, you're just another person. There's a, there's billions of them all over the world. It's no big deal. You are a soul. You're a person that Jesus died for, right? Like I, I have to interact with you not from a worldly point of view, but an, an eternal one. Yeah. You know that changes yeah. everything. Yeah. I right? start to see people 
um, as people that are going to land in heaven or hell. They're people that Jesus died for. They're brothers and sisters I may spend eternity with. Mm-hmm. Right? It starts to show up in all kinds of different ways. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's interesting. Like when you think about people that are apart from the Lord, you know, that yeah. are followers of Jesus, mm-hmm. and how we seek reconciliation in our relationships, like what example that sets for them, what statement that makes mm-hmm. for them. But then you also think about like people that are followers oh, yeah. of Jesus, right. you know, that need, like we need to continually be reconciled to God. Yeah. You know, it's not like this one time thing and then we're good for the rest of our lives, right. you know, because the problem is we sin, we, sure. we stray away. And so this idea of continual yeah. reconciliation yeah. is a huge thing. Right. Where I continue to want to call people back to God, yeah. just as I would hope that my brothers and sisters would call me back to mm-hmm. him. Right. We want to always be reconciling back to God. And it's funny that, as we reconcile to God, it brings unity between yeah, us. That's good. Yeah. Right? That's that's the ultimate that's the ultimate product mm-hmm. is unity. Yeah. Right? Because we're all moving towards God together. Yeah. Re- whether we're Christ followers or becoming a Christ follower, right. that's what it actually brings unity among humanity. Right. Like movement towards God. It's yeah. good because it's very other centered. Yeah. You know, like we can be very selfish in our perspective. When we get hurt, you know, when conflict comes, somebody has wronged us, right. we can be very selfish in that and not want to be reconciled. But that's not the way that God teaches right. us. You know, he teaches us reconciliation, which is others centered. Mm-hmm. And when, we, when that is our mindset, you're right. I mean, we draw people in yeah. as one body, as one church, right. as one group of yeah. followers of Jesus. That's awesome. I, so what I hear you guys saying is, uh, as as you're as you're walking through that passage and kind of giving us put some, putting some skin on that or some flesh on that a little bit. So the idea of uh, understanding the depth, or maybe continually understanding the depth of our recon- of what we've been reconciled to God mm-hmm. from, mm-hmm. Uh, it has not only implications in our own interpersonal relationships with one another, but right. there's kind of this idea that you guys were bringing out that uh, I become an ambassador of reconciliation, and I look at people differently, not right. as disposable, and I'm actually being used by God. I'm his minister, if you will, to, to communicate to others the reconciliation that needs to happen between he and they or yeah, them, right? right? So I think that's awesome. So if we're going to uh, <clears throat> drill down a little bit more, maybe get a little practical with this, mm-hmm. I think that's that's awesome stuff. Um, maybe the next question uh, that, that we might want to know is, uh, how do we know that we have reached the goal of reconciliation? Now, the, the caveat is, obviously, I love what you, you brought out, Jeff, is that... Uh, that you you discover that you need to continually be reconciled. So maybe not the goal of reconciliation, but like at least that we know that we're on the road right. toward having this reconciliation of God exhibited in our own lives and relationships. Um, I guess the questions might the question might be, what are some concrete signs or indicators or marks, maybe even byproducts uh, that, of authentic reconciliation? In other words, that when we see these things starting to develop in our lives and our relationships. We know that we're effectively being ambassadors of reconciliation, and then if we haven't reached a goal, at least we're on the road to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good. I think I think the easiest place to see is between relationships with people, hmm. right? So, like, if you and I have a broken relationship, step one is I have to deal with that in my heart. So, forgiveness is step one, right? I hmm. I have to choose to forgive you in my heart if you've hurt me. I gotta forgive you, and then I have to move towards mending the broken relationship that we have. Um, as I forgive and move towards reconciliation, a healing of relationship, some things should start to show up. Like I should start to care about your well-being. Wow, that's good. Yeah. You, you know what yeah, I mean? Like no, I, I, rather I than hoping for your demise, like I should start to care right. that, that you flourish and do well. I should be able to pray for you again. Mm-hmm. You know, or maybe before mm-hmm. I would struggle with that. Mm-hmm. I should be able to look you in the eye. You know, I should be able to pass you in the hallway and it not feel like I'm passing an enemy. Mm-hmm. You know, or, or yeah. I'm gonna blush if I if I walk past you because right. there's still anger there. Mm. Right? Sometimes we can throw out and say, "Oh yeah, I've forgiven that person." You know, or, or yeah, we're we're fine, we're on good terms. But in reality, like the little signs of actual reconciliation and forgiveness mm-hmm. aren't really accompanying. I don't want to be with that person, and I don't think it always means that if I've reconciled, that I'm gonna be somebody's best friend. Oh, that's good. You know, yeah. I think that it, reconciliation doesn't mean that there's not boundaries. You know, sometimes that can show up. There might need to be wisdom also applied to, especially in uh, complex broken relationships, maybe when there's abuse or divorce or, or difficult issues, right? This isn't always simple. Um, but there should be a, a genuine hope for someone's well-being, you know, and a willingness to be in the same room with them. 
Mm-hmm. You know, some of those, ter- those are things that I would think yeah, of. Yeah, that's, that's good. You know, that start to show up. Yeah, I love that. I, I, I think of things like being quick to forgive yep. people. You know, like when, when somebody has offended me, when somebody's hurt me, I'm quick to offer them grace mm-hmm. and forgiveness. I think a big thing um, is like overlooking an offense that somebody has, you know, uh, like if true. somebody is, yeah, if, if it's a minimal thing, I don't have to take everything so personal, you know, because my value doesn't come from what right. you have done or what right. you think of me or anything like that. But my value comes from the Lord. Yeah. I, I think, you know, the capacity to do that is right. a big deal. And I think like what compels us, you know, Paul says Christ's love compels us in oh, here. You know, are we being compelled by his love, the love that he's given us? Are we exhibiting that? To other people in their lives, or are we being compelled by our bitterness? Yeah, you know, that's a great by our hurt, by our pain, things like that. Wow. So yeah, I mean, I think those are some of the some of the big marks. Am I seeing people from a worldly perspective, mm-hmm. or am I being compelled by the love of Christ and not by my bitterness yeah. and my pain? Yeah, because you like when you trust somebody, you love them. You're gonna give them benefit of the doubt. Yeah. You just hear things mm-hmm. differently and yep. interpret those actions differently. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Not everything has to go in so deep. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. It, that love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. just to, yeah. And oh, partially cool. because you know them too. Yeah. Uh, which means that there is uh, relational connectivity of a deeper variety than just the casual social, hey, how are you? So yeah. You're able to uh, interpret it for them even before um, any angst or anger, you know, right. or frustration comes up in your heart for them. That's awesome stuff. Well, well great, man. Second Corinthians 5, amazing chapter, right? It but sure uh, thank you guys for uh, yeah. unpacking a little bit of maybe even theologically how that functions, this vertical reconciliation with God and how that spills over into our horizontal understanding of relationships, but also the practical stuff, these concrete signs. So appreciate you guys being here. Thanks. Yeah, thanks.